Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, it is the best of our industries, it's the worst of our industries. Financial services. It's the best because we are world leaders in international banking and it earns a remarkable amount for the country. And it's the worst, well, you don't need me to remind you of why. And today, the Bank of England held an open forum to take soundings on how to better ensure we get more wisdom and less foolishness from our banks. Most striking was the bank governor's declaration that the industry is increasingly part of the solution rather than the problem, notwithstanding some bad apples. And he hinted, hinted, it's time to end banker bashing. Well, we'll discuss that shortly, but some for first thoughts from Duncan Weldon. Today, the great and the good of the financial sector gathered at London's Guildhall to discuss the future of the city. Before 2008, financial services were the UK's golden goose. But then that golden goose fell the nest, and Britain had its deepest recession in decades. Seven years on, policy towards bankers is changing direction. But public faith remains low. A survey carried out for the Bank of England has found that only one in three members of the public think that what happens in financial markets benefits the rest of the economy. It's to try and allay those sort of fears that the Bank of England is today hosting what it calls its open forum. That's public meetings here in London, Birmingham and Edinburgh. And it's even encouraging people to take to social media and make their views known. In fact, Earlier today, BOE Open Forum briefly trended on Twitter. Although, to be fair, it didn't get as much attention as Justin Bieber's new tour. Or what we might have simply got wrong. But the people inside the hall were more interested in what the governor had to say. So we want to not only profile today the progress that has been made in reforming markets, but to spur this continual process of review. This isn't just about fixing the fault lines of the last crisis. It's also about seizing new opportunities from fintech and market-based finance, and it's about building truly global markets in the UK and elsewhere with the cross-border governance and cooperation structures that they need to function well. Britain really has two financial systems, one serving households and companies domestically, and another, often called the city, even though much of it is now in Canary Wharf. That internationally focused bunch of firms is what's driven much financial sector growth. The combined balance sheets of the financial system, the total value of their liabilities, have soared over the last few decades. Back in 1960, the banking system's balance sheet was slightly smaller than the UK's annual economic output. By 2010, it alone was almost six times as big. It doubled in size in just 15 years. And today, Mark Carney said that by 2050, it could have grown to 15 times GDP. But is this growth something to celebrate or something to fret about? One person who isn't fretting was on his way to a dinner when we spoke to him and doesn't always dress like this. There are over a million people employed in financial services. That's not just in London, that's across the country and in all the associated professional services that, that go and the support services that go with that core financial employment, uh, it is undoubtedly a great asset. We're very good at it in this country uh, and it contributes uh, about 8% of GDP. It's about the same to our economy as the creative industries as a whole. Recent IMF research has suggested that in general a bigger and more developed financial sector is good for growth. But, and this is an important but, they also found it was possible to have too much of a good thing. That beyond a certain point, a large financial system, rather than adding to economic growth, added to economic volatility. They found that Japan, the United States and Ireland had already passed that tipping point. And whilst they didn't specifically look at the UK, given how large our financial system is, you can maybe guess which side of the line we'd be on. For one speaker at today's forum, it's not so much the size of the system that's a worry, but what it does. If it's just financing itself, of course there's a problem that it's too big. And in fact, that is what we've seen in the last 30 years. You've had this complete outshooting of the financial intermediation sector in terms of percentage of gross value added compared to the rest of the real economy. If that financial sector was actually really nurturing real innovation and capital development of the economy, you know, if it's too big, it's too small, would be sort of less worrying. But when you have a useless financial sector that is just focused on itself, that is a problem. Today's forum asked the questions, but didn't get to the answers. 
Is the financial sector fixed now? Did we overdo it with the post-recession clampdown? Or are we just being too quick to forget the lessons of the recent past? Some good questions from Duncan there. And as he mentioned, there are two financial service industries, the one designed to serve us and the global one that sees the world as its oyster or its lobster and champagne. Uh, we need both domestic and international finance to work. So how should we make them? With me, fund manager Nicola Hornick and economist John Kay, author of Other People's Money about the weaknesses of our financial system. And John was at the open forum uh, this morning. John, as I understand it, the book effectively says the banks are all just dealing with each other, solving each other's problems in very complicated ways rather than dealing with ordinary... Yes, we have these figures about bank assets and liabilities have been grown to six times GDP. What's behind that is that the assets of banks are mostly the liabilities of other banks and the liabilities of banks are mostly the assets right. of so other banks. So they've been banks. lending and borrowing so from each other. overwhelmingly yeah, yeah. uh, tr trading with each other. Right. Yeah. Rather than... Um, and the complexity is created by bankers in order to... Milk the rest of us? Or what? Uh, some of it's created by bankers in order, let's not say milk the rest of us, but to bemuse the rest of us. Quite a lot of it actually comes from the complexity of the regulatory system. Yeah. And I think we need to see regulation as being as much part of the problem as part of the solution. Yeah. That's what's generated a lot of this activity and a lot of the complexity of it. Nicola, that's the, the basic critique in a nutshell. Well, I think back to the 70s and the early 80s and how dire our economy was and what would we have done if we hadn't had financial services? It is very important to our economy, as everybody keeps saying, a million people are employed in financial services in the UK. They're all relatively highly paid. The money they spend goes towards promoting lots of other business, help, helping lots of other businesses in our country. And the fact is, I mean, estimates vary, but it's between 8 and 10% of our GDP that's actually produced by the sector. And you're talking there about the international industry and what it sells to the world and the exports, the tens of billions of pounds of exports and all of that, correct? Well, some of it is yeah. domestic banking, but that's the boring bit. But really, the bit that really extent. is sort of useful to the economy in the sort of balance of payment sense. Is yes, that, and, yeah. and yeah. you know, the, we were lucky. We spoke English. And that's why London was chosen as the financial centre of the world. We also sit in the middle of the time zones. So we have lots of global heads of all sorts of right. bits of banks who sit here in London. So, John, do you see any distinction should be drawn between, if you like, the failures of the British banking system to serve, I don't know, industry in Middlesbrough or a, 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 an average saver? and the international banks, which we host. What we're doing, really, is hosting a German bank selling services to the Singapore um, government. Yes, I, mean, I think the distinction you're making there is quite important. And we ought to understand that most of the million people Mark Carney was talking about are doing rather mundane clerical jobs in branch banks, call centres, insurance offices. The number of people who work in what one might call the city is perhaps 150,000. But the remuneration they earn, of course, is... Uh, dramatic. But the exports they generate is tens of billions, isn't it? It is well, earning. I don't think we know what the exports they generate are, just as we don't really know what the contribution of GDP is. When you start burying down <laughs> these statistics, <laughs> uh, I'm afraid um, <laughs> you discover it, it's a bit of a mess. The truth is that the ordinary ways of measuring economic output don't work very well right. when you try to apply them to financial services. I'm going to get a bit more visceral here. Nicola, is one of the reasons why the public haven't grown to love banks and are frankly a bit you know, sceptical when they hear people saying, is it time to draw closure on the, on the crash, is that it still feels as though the culprits got away with it, that just not enough people went to jail, bluntly. Isn't that the... Hmm. Well, it's difficult to know whether people should have gone to jail. You're going to send people to jail, they have to have, you know, have demonstrate that they actually committed a crime. And I'm not sure that there were crimes as such. I mean, what happened was there was excess liquidity in the system. All sorts of very bad decisions were made. Whether that's a criminal offence is, uh, you know, I'm not sure it is. Well, it was but decisions that they benefit, benefited from and then ultimately didn't serve that's their shareholders or their savers or taxpayers. That's a different argument. And, and I have to say, the one thing that I find a little odd is that the shareholders didn't play a bigger role because there were lots of warning signs and I didn't notice many shareholders standing up and saying, what are you all doing, you bankers or people running these banks? And that mystifies me because the fund managers who control large holdings in these banks ought to have been saying something. There were plenty of warning signs. Well, it doesn't mystify me very much. When one asked 
asset managers, why didn't you do something about RBS for the Royal Bank of Scotland, which went bust in 2008? And the answer I kept getting was it was more important for us to be a more underweight in Royal Bank of Scotland than it was to, to answer back to Fred Goodwin. Right, so and a lot easier as the well. The shareholders were saying, rather than do something about a bank that is going wrong and about to go bust, we just sell our shares you, and you get sell out a bit quicker a bit. than the next guy. And no, you want to sell a bit more than the next guy. <laughs> yeah, but somebody and must right, have been overweight. Right, right. <laughs> and until we change that kind of structure, uh, we're not going to change right. much about shareholders Don, and banks. Duncan showed a graph that showed how big the British banking sector is becoming. I mean, with the, 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 the size of the loans and the banks hold uh, is vastly bigger than our GDP. Should that worry us, Nicola, or is that just a sign that we're, we, we're not standing behind those loans and that if those banks want to settle here, then we should let them? Well, I think the thing is, it, it is overall good news for us that the banking sector is as big as it is. And by the way, when, when we say banking sector, there are lots of things within banks that aren't strictly banking. So I've worked for three banks, but I'm not a banker. I'm a fund manager. So there are all sorts of other things that sit within banks that aren't strictly banking. They're not lending money. It could be managing assets. But in terms of you know, whether we should be concerned, well, I think the problem is actually watching over them and regulating them. And that is a very difficult task. It's very, very hard for the regulators to keep track when you've got lots of super clever people doing whizzy things with computers. Does it worry you, John? If it, if uh, it worries me a lot. And uh, there are a couple of points in what Nicola said. One is she's pointed out that she's worked for several banks and is not a banker. Actually, most <laughs> people who work for banks now are not bankers. <laughs> what we've created is huge financial conglomerates, which have clashes of culture, conflicts of interest, and are not really capable of being managed by anyone, far less regulated by anyone. So instead of saying we need better regulators, which I think is a hopeless task, we ought to say let's try and create a structure of, indus of the industry which people can manage, which serves customers better, and which is actually possible to regulate and regulate in a fairly, I hope, minimalist way. That's the agenda for next time. Nicola, John Kay, thank you both very much indeed. We should treat road bankers <laughs> like, sho <laughs> like shoplifters and now, throw them in jail. Th this this, is, Carney, this so is a really it. interesting story because um, in this country, mm -hmm. I don't think any banker has gone to jail as a result of what happened in 2008. In America, they have. Um, and this government has been in power now since 2010. We had Vince Cable as the business secretary uh, saying that bankers were sort of rogues and all the rest of it. He did nothing to put them in jail, didn't introduce any new laws. Um, now, George Osborne has said this today, it's, it comes on the day that the Bank of England have held an open day. It was basically yeah. to sort of start in the fight back to try and explain to people that actually, you know, capitalism is quite a good thing and it's better than any of the other alternatives. It's about time someone made that case because nobody has for quite a few years. So I think um, this, this is quite an interesting thing that Osborne said today. Well, uh, and I think the Bank of... Uh, it was a bit more sophisticated than the way Ian puts it, I think, the open forum that the Bank of England held. I'm pretty impressed with Mark Carney and I think this is the latest in a sort of interesting set of things that he's doing. Mm. Trying to engage people, they had schools involved yeah. and all sorts of people engaged in what actually, what is the role of capitalism? What is the role of financial it's markets? It's trust back into the whole uh, area, isn't it? And that, yeah, that's no, a long term thing. You don't yeah, do that yeah, yeah. on one day. No, no, of course not. But this is a good example of actually mm -hmm. getting people involved in the, in the debate. I agree mm. with that. But it is a bit bizarre for Osborne to say this because, you know, it wasn't that many years ago that he was arguing there was too much regulation in the financial sector. So. But